today we're going to dig in and talk about pitching. And you know that over at Filthy Rich Writer and the Comprehensive Copywriting Academy, we're all about pitching. Pitching that is very value-based, so it is welcome, um, so that the people that are receiving those pitches are actually glad to get them, which is very different than a lot of the way a lot of the ways that people pitch, which is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how not to pitch. There are some broad themes mm -hmm. that are absolute no-goes, absolute uh, red flags, bad ideas, whatever else you want to call them. Mm -hmm. um, Kate, what's, uh, what's one of the first ones that people should Ooh. avoid? The biggest one I think is um, not being specific in your pitch and having a very templated response to everyone you're pitching. So, you know, you want to get the volume out. So you just kind of recycle the same pitch over and over and over again versus looking at the company you're pitching and showing that you took the time to research them and and have a specific idea to that organization that they could implement um, and, and, you know, that's valuable. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's if you haven't taken the time to at least learn something about my company, then why on earth should I take the time to get in touch with you to answer this pitch? Enthusiasm, like that general, or general um, genuine is the word we're looking for, uh, that genuine enthusiasm and positivity is really important. And we definitely want you to put that in your pitches. But at the same time, you need to use specific examples that you will garner through research of what you like about this company, not just like, hey, I really like your company. Like, all right, super. I really like cereal. I don't know why that was my example, but you know what I mean. Because cereal's great. <laughs> cereal's great. Um, now I want cereal. Uh, what is it about my company, our company, that you like? What, what Life have we is very different than Fruity Pebbles. It's... <laughs> We're going to go down a rabbit hole here. Um, <laughs> but what is it? What what have we posted that you've liked? Did you see something on Instagram that you really agreed with? Did you read a blog post that you really liked? Have you seen a video? Have you listened to a, a podcast episode? What is it that you are enthusiastic about? And that's mm -hmm. when you guys are putting together your pitches. That's where you want to start with that enthusiasm and that positivity but also tied to something real that shows that you actually do follow this company or research this company. Because mm -hmm. it's really easy to say, yeah, I like your company and not know anything about it. Absolutely. And I want to go back to the subject line because the asterisk, if you if you type it out on your computer, like 10 asterisks and then guest blog post opportunity in all caps and another 10 asterisks, you'll kind of visually see that that looks, it looks like a spam subject line, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you go to your spam fil folder, that's a good place to get ideas for kind of what to avoid. Um, you know, are there common trends in your spam folder that show things that clearly are getting picked up by the spam filter because their mass emails are generic or have 10 asterisks in the subject line that make it look a little yeah i don't want to open spam but mm -hmm. that's not what people want in subject lines people want a very clear subject line that says who you are and what you have to offer and for it to feel human you know this feels a little bit like um you know, there's, the, is this a person writing this? You don't need a lot of context, but at least a line or so that says kind of who you are and, and how you relate to that business. You know, if you're pitching a business, say you're in Seattle, hey, as a Seattle resident um, and copywriter, I love blah, 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 and this is what I noticed or, mm -hmm. you know. What you'll probably see in pitch emails even more commonly is stuff like, hey, I'm so-and-so, I build apps, get in touch with me now. And you see it again and again, and it's literally just mass emailed out. They are throwing stuff at a wall. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the the biggest thing is the what what is the benefit? Am I you know? Yeah, and you can also sell it. Ten, you get things that are like, hey, we can get you more customers, and you're like, yeah, I don't actually. I don't have customers. Yes, I got one of those too. It was about re similar. Yeah, I noticed that you're not running Google remarketing on your website. Which, why would I on my portfolio website? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So those are some pretty egregious examples. Yeah, those are. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> like Whoa. aggressively bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to talk too about a couple of examples that might at first sound like they're a direction you want to go. Um, so here's one. Uh, my name is Sam and I'm reaching out to see if you need help boosting engagement on your Facebook page or Tom, I saw your blog hasn't been updated in a while. Are you looking for a writer? My name is Andy and I'm looking and I'm reaching out to see if you need some help updating your blog with quality articles. Here's the problem with all of those. It is very sales focused and it's very focused on you instead of, and it, it, people's immediate reaction when they get an email like this is to be like, no, God, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to hire you. Please get out of my inbox. That's not the kind of pitching that you want to be doing. The kind of pitching that you want to be doing is very unsalesy, is very, um, very friendly and very value focused. And yes, like, okay, if you help boost, do you need help boosting engagement on your Facebook page? But that's not even the end benefit, you know, like, what's the end benefit of boosting engagement on my Facebook page? So instead of, and hi, John, I saw your blog hasn't been updated in a while. Are you looking for a writer? Like, ugh, no, I'm not. Well, with ugh. all of those too, yeah, it's a yes or no question. I yeah, think anytime you point. use a yes or no question, try to get rid of it because the answer might be no. And then Dolly. Mm -hmm. And exactly. if it's yes, it's like, yes, but and what? Yeah, yes, I need her, but but what, what next? Yeah, exactly. What, it, exactly. Yeah, but why should I choose you? Like they've clearly mm -hmm. done the base level of research, but nothing beyond that. Um, whereas the way we teach pitching is you do that research and you come in very enthusiastic, but instead of being like, "Hey, I want work from you," you come in by presenting an idea. You've done some research, so we have an idea of something that they could do that would benefit your business. Oh, by the way, I'm a copywriter and I could do this for you. If you want to get on a call, you know, not if you want to get on a call, but it, you know, if you have some time to get on a call, I'd love to chat with you. This is very, it's all about giving. You're not telling them how to do it. You're not telling them how to write copy by any means ever, um, but you are giving them an idea of what, of how their business could be benefited and how you could be the person to help build their business, to benefit their business. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the other key to these. Why you? There's so many copywriters and maybe they've had other copywriters reach out to them. Maybe they've worked with copywriters before. Um, so making sure you get in some sort of, you know, mini USP potentially of mm -hmm. why you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But when you make a pitch email, like in those examples, when you make a pitch email about yourself, it's never going to end well. Mm -hmm. When you make a pitch email about the company, focused on the company, focused on what you like about the company, focused on an idea you had, hey, I really like your company. Here's an idea. I really think this idea could help your company in XYZ way. It's so much people who get emails like that, and I think you can feel there's a difference to that. The people who get the, the pitches that our students write are so much more open to them and, and a lot of times grateful to get the pitch emails because it's not about what can I get from you? It's about how can I help you? What value can I bring to the table? And it's not like, I have an idea, but you have to get in touch with me to find out what the idea is. Mm -hmm. It's, hey, I had an idea and I love your son company so much. I just wanted to share the idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, if you like the idea, I can help you do it because I'm a copywriter. But it's it's so giving oriented and so value oriented that it, it's, it's goodwill in a way. It's, it's You're identifying a need they might not have even have known that they had mm -hmm. for many of them. Mm -hmm, like, exactly. oh, you just pointed out this gap or hole in my my marketing. Oh my gosh, yes. Like, thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the thing is too, is that when you're writing in that way that is so giving oriented and so, so oriented in a way to benefit their business, even if they don't 
want to move forward with that idea, or maybe even if they don't need a copywriter at that moment, they're so much more likely to hang on to your email, you know, put it into a folder or maybe forward it to someone they know who does need a copywriter than the other types of pitches. The other types of pitches, one of the reasons why people send those types of pitches in, in mass, en masse, uh, is because so few people actually respond to them. But when you write out a really quality pitch, you get a higher response rate because first of all, it's a, it's a, a genuine, uh, helpful email. So you get a, a higher response rate and you get a much more positive response rate where with the other ones, you're probably going to get a lot of like, please don't contact me again mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. Take me off your list. Um, with our kind of pitch emails, it's, it's just that you're making a genuine connection and you are, you are showing yourself as a, uh, a trusted expert and a potential partner for them, a potential resource for them. Like, hey, I have a lot to offer. Here I am. Also, here's an idea. Yeah, absolutely. I think remembering that you're a human talking to another human is really key because I think some of us sit down and we're like, we have to go into business mode and write with certain words or else they're going to think I'm a fraud. And it's really just write how you would want to receive an email from a friend or, you know, that you would be excited to open because it's it's not spam because it is, it's like finding mail in your mailbox because that's so rare now where you're like, oh, someone sent me a real card and it's from a real person. It's similar with, with email, especially now because there is so much mass email that it's like, oh, this is, this is a, a delight because it's not, it's it's a real human name in the the from line and the subject line feels very real and not um, just part of a marketing campaign. Like it's that gem of an email in your inbox that you're going for. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I love that point. I know too that sometimes students are a little bit, or the copywriters are a little bit concerned that if they email people they don't know, it's going to be spam. Is that a concern they should have? It, because it's a one-to-one, -one, you're sending out one email to one person, you don't have to be concerned about it. You're not opting people into a mass mailing list. Mm -hmm. That's also part of the reason you don't want to send yeah. mass emails to people. And you don't want to take people's, if you have a mailing list, uh, I mean like an actual, I send a list and it goes out to 10,000 people. Um, you don't want to just automatically add people to your list. That is spamming. And of course, if you send an email to someone and, you know, for whatever reason, they're having a bad day or they never email me again. Yeah. <laughs> if you happen to get one of those people, which thank goodness you don't get them as a yeah. client. Um, if you happen to get one of those people, then just don't email them again. Make Straight a note not to follow list. up with yeah. them. Exactly. Um, but, you know, you, when you are emailing people on a one-to-one -one basis, you are not violating spam laws or GDPR or any of that kind of stuff. So you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And not worrying about them thinking you're spam either. If it's a, yes, a quality exactly. pitch. Exactly. The, the, the higher the quality is of the pitch, first of all, the, the more responses you're going to get back and the more positive responses you're going to get back. Once you learn it, it's almost easier to write a good pitch yeah. than it is to write a bad pitch. And you certainly want a good pitch to be what people associate you with. And as a copywriter, yeah, you have to write good pitches. Yeah. It's, it is your marketing material for yourself. So yeah, you do have to put in a little bit of time. Uh, and the first couple will take you a while. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but you will get faster at it and you'll find things that you can reuse from email to email. And it, you don't have to, you're not reinventing the wheel every time you start a new pitch email. You will get faster. Um, take the time and write great pitch emails. It's so much, uh, so much more beneficial in the long run. Thanks for watching. Make sure you don't miss any tips, tools, or tactics for copywriters by clicking subscribe right now. And of course, you can always find us over at filthyrichwriter.com. We'll see you next time.